Hello, I'm Pat McDonough. This is Super Citizen Television. We're going to do something that's very rare. We're going to talk about President Trump and his achievements. And you know, you don't hear about that, right? Because the fake news and the big lies are always about the president. He hasn't done anything. Well, this is one of those rare public affair TV shows that gives you another viewpoint and gives you the truth. I'm Pat McDonough. We will be right back. Welcome back. I'm Pat McDonough along with Frank Marchant. And uh, Frank, let's start off talking about the president's chances for re-election. If you hear from the other side, he has no chance of re-election. And I, I don't agree with that. I think he's going to do pretty well. I think he's going, it's going to be a landslide. I think we're looking at Nixon McGovern uh, all over. All well, over. this was back in 1972. Yeah. And of course, Nixon was an incumbent like the president. Yes. Uh, and also McGovern was way out in left field, like whoever they're going to nominate, it doesn't oh. matter. Uh, they are going to be like George McGovern. And at that point in time, Nixon had really started rounding up the radical left. After winning the election over Hubert Humphrey, uh, which was unexpected, it was a right. close election, but because the radical left had gotten so crazy at the Chicago Democrat Convention I remember. and had been bombing people, as some of President Obama's for, friends right. when they were younger, yes. were bombing police stations. But uh, Nixon pulled it off. He ran on a law and order uh, platform. And then, of course, he was running for re-election. Watergate had not warmed up at that point. And George McGovern had emerged from the rejection of the Vietnam War, from the rejection of everything, and that was kind of like, it, it really wasn't, I don't think, as intense or f deep as this is today. It was just a fringe part of the party. Lyndon Johnson, the Kennedys had been gone, and uh, ha uh, Hubert Humphrey had been, and they kind of filled that vacuum. Right. Well, the weathermen at that time were the big, deadly force yeah. on the far left. Sir, what was and the, what stopped the weathermen was they blew up a nail bomb that blew themselves up, and then, and then it was over. Small group. It was a small group. It was a small, small group. Not anything like Antifa, or what, is, the the whole system through the whole system throughout the United States. But yeah. looking at the numbers, the polls the the polls cannot figure out Donald Trump. Now here's something I think is interesting: the wise guys and the professional betters. Every single one of those organizations in Las Vegas, Atlantic City, everywhere have Trump winning with the Democrats not having a chance. Now, I got to tell you, right. I have more faith in Nunzio Galatuzzi than I do in Rachel Maddow. <laughs> I got to tell you, because these guys, they don't bet money Wait. unless they think they're going to win, yeah. and they don't bet crazy. Right. And Nunzio speaks so highly of you, too. So it's mutual admiration. You're right. It's it's slanted. It's not. It's it. They just are just beside themselves. They want so badly for Trump to lose, as they did the first time. Well, also one of the, you know, he's just in terms of intelligence, he is displaying for us how dumb our politicians really are. Yeah. Because this guy is brilliant. Uh, you you had compared him at one time to. Uh, what is it, the, the coyote? The roadrunner and the coyote. coyote. Right. Yeah, that, that's right. No matter what they throw at him, he escapes. I have another comparison. Go ahead. He is like a man with a laser teasing a cat. That's pretty good. I like. You know, I like that. They're all shopping. <laughs> they're all. And so, so, yeah. So he's so smart. In politics, you always try to define your opponent and define the general, uh, where where the campaign is going. So Trump says that the squad. He attacks the squad, and they should go back where they came from. Right. So right away, the media, the pundits, all of the knuckleheads say this is racist. This is racist. Now, the reason they're saying it's racist is because 
they are racist and they're trying to pander to the black vote, which they're not too sure about. Now, but here's the thing. It, ordinary Americans recognize it as being patriotic. Yes, Not they racist. do. It's and how is that any different than love it or leave it from the 60s? I mean, is it, there's nothing better than being American. So, I mean, this is the greatest feeling. If you don't love it, leave it. USA, number one. And it, it's just, it's, it's no a, different. And nobody muttered or murmured or whispered racism. Man, no. It was love it or leave it. But th they don't have anything to throw at this man. So they throw everything at this poor guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the people are, are wiser than... And, uh, and, and the teasing the cat with the taser thing is that Nancy Pelosi, whom they had just called a, a racist, racist the a week racist. before, right. she rushes to their defense yes. and the Democrats embrace these knuckleheads. Yeah. Now, this is what the president wanted to do. He wanted to make them the face of the Democrat Party. Right. And, and they, he did. And they, they bought into it. They bought into it. And, and I don't think that they're even smart enough to know what happened. They probably still have still, still, still standing there thinking, what? What, what? what? what happened here? Well, he's been successful. We looked at his kickoff rally. He, he raised $24 million. And we look at his salute to America that they tried to degrade, and it turned out to be a very big hit. Yeah. And the people of America loved it. So uh, I feel confident about 2020, but I think it's fair to say it's going to be all about turnout. Yes. Now, I can tell you the other side is going to turn out. There's no, they, well, they hate him. That's yeah. why. They hate him, and they're going to turn out because they hate him, not because the economy isn't sensational, not because – the United States is on a better path than it's been on in the last 75 years. It's because they hate him. Just because they hate him. It's yeah. no other reason. Well, what do they done. say? Fear and love motivate. Yeah, Fear well, that's more than true. Anything. And that is frightening because uh, Republicans did not turn out the last election. And now they didn't turn we, out in the midterms. No, and look what we have in Congress. They got in trouble. Look what we're putting up with. Now. All right, so Thompson's. anyway, we're going to come back after this break, and we're going to talk about that economy where – the other factor in this election, and the radical left, the socialists, this is a huge part of their whole agenda, is the big lie. Right. And we're going to point out how they lie about the president and what he has done. I mean, for, for one thing, to say he hasn't accomplished anything or he hasn't done anything, we're going to make sure that's all a big lie and tell you about it. But the economy, to lie about the economy, that's something different. I'm Pat McDonough, along with Frank Marchant, and we will be right back. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club. Let your voice be heard across the state. For just $20 a year, you'll receive inside access to our social media network, direct delivery of our Super Citizen newsletter, and advance notice and discounts to our special events and more. Call 410-238-0025. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club, today. Okay, we're back talking about President Trump and his accomplishments. Uh, one of the things without question is the immigration issue. Can you imagine if Hillary Clinton, with her open borders and sanctuary policies, we would be overrun right now if she were in the Oval Office. This president has tried the best he can with the advocates for open borders, yep. the Democrat Party, advocates for sanctuary cities, and he still has fought them not only on the wall, but on other issues, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know what we would have done without him. A great example of what happens with open borders and sanctuary cities is California. This, oh, my the God. The once great, there are 60,000 homeless people in California right now as we talk. Mm -hmm. Those 60,000 people are using the Pacific Ocean as their personal toilet. Well, in Where San Francisco, are the, they're using the streets. Well, it's all it's all washing into the ocean, and that's what I mean. At one point. Where are the environmentalists? Why aren't they screaming? There is a thing happening in L.A., a vast failure that is making people afraid, and they should be afraid. This is Skid Row in Los Angeles, and none of the things you see here, the garbage and the filth and the degradation is shocking to those of us in Seattle. We see it almost every day. But the sheer volume of it here, the enormity of it all, is truly mind-boggling. And it has opened the doors to some next-level problems that are horrifying. And now, bubbling at the surface, is the long-ignored cousin of addiction and homelessness, disease. We have not seen conditions 
for humans like this since medieval times. 60,000 people using the Pacific Ocean as a toilet is probably not a good thing. Talk, but talk nobody about is climate saying anything. change. Talk, uh, nobody has said a word. Nobody is screaming. Well, now they're talking bubonic plague, which is a real possibility. Very, yeah, in the health issue, in addition to the environmental issue, is out of control, and they've had some health issues there already. Uh, probably some yes. we're not hearing about. Yes, you're right. And G G Gavin Newsom, who was the mayor of San Francisco, is now the governor of California. Uh, is just allowing things to become unhinged in that state, but all those western states. Washington, they're doing uh, uh, Washington State with Seattle with yes. that $15 minimum wage. They're losing jobs. They are filled with the homeless, uh, middle class homeless, because they can't afford the housing in downtown right. uh, Seattle. Portland, Oregon, where Antifas is out of control and the mayor is letting the police uh, yes. stand down like our famous mayor did in Baltimore. Yes, but it's in addition only things, to, let them break it. I, they're doing a recall yeah. of the governor of Oregon. They got the petitions already to recall her. Thank God, you know, in our state of Maryland, they call it a tight pants state because at the, that's a political statement. That yeah. means we don't have recall. We don't yeah. have initiative. We don't have term well, limits. We, we haven't don't. had initiatives here in a long, long time. But I mean, the people can't start. <laughs> like, one thing in California, they do have the initiative and they do have recall. Yeah. A lot of states do. We do not. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe we're across an old state, but that's all about powerful politics. If you want to know how open borders works and sanctuary cities work, look at California. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just look to California. And I know we have well, you know, friends in you, California. Frank, and they most you don't, you don't have agree. to go to California. Where go you to gonna Maryland. Go? Maryland yeah. is out of control. Maryland is, look, if I'm an illegal immigrant and I'm coming to the United States, if I want son, I'm going to California. If I want son once in a while, I'm going to Maryland. I'm going to go to one of two states because Maryland gives you driver's license, pays for your education, That's has true. open borders, everything, sanctuary city, sanctuary Baltimore County. You get whatever you want. All the politicians are on your side. All the mayors are on your side. I'm going to be coming to Maryland. Maryland's got a million illegal immigrants, and one in six residents of the state of Maryland are foreigners. Really? They're non-American citizens. And now, now, they're not all illegal, but of course one not. in six. Of course not. And there's nothing wrong. And, and I'm not saying I have anything against immigration. I'm saying it should be done legally. That's all. And, and uh, Barack Obama said the same thing. Uh, you know, we are a generous and welcoming people here in the United States. But those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law. Uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants. Well, the radical this left and the Democrats do not believe in the law. They believe in lawlessness. They believe that illegal immigrants are above the law. Now, if you live in Baltimore City and you don't pay your property tax bill, you'll get fined or go to jail or both, okay? Yeah. You're not above the law. But if you're an illegal immigrant and ICE wants you, even if you've committed a crime, the Baltimore City Police are not going to cooperate with you. You are above the law. But the, one of the things this, this president is doing, he appointed two Supreme Court judges, we, justices. Yes. We need a third one. But he's promote, he has appointed successfully over 125 judges in right. the federal system. If you don't vote for President Trump for any other reason, that's the reason to vote for him, for the third Supreme Court yeah, judge. Yeah, he will, he will do more than half. Uh, he might do 400 judges. Uh, he might do more than half of the but federal judiciary. But can you judiciary. imagine how many ju more judges he'd have in four more years? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He, well, he, 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 well, he would have Supreme at least 400. Court, because he I, could get, he, we only need one more judge on the Supreme Court. I think we're going to get one more in the next four years. I oh, think. Yeah, yeah. I think that she will retire, and you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it will be a wonderful thing if that happens. Well, I believe the president can win re-election. He looks stronger now than he ever has. He appears to be getting stronger. He keeps accomplishing his goals. He keeps getting good things happening for America. He's like that man with that taser, and the cats keep chasing it, and they can't catch it. That's and, true. And they keep doing stupid things. And we have uh, the debates 
where for the first time the golden vote in America, the independents, the undecided, the moderates, they have witnessed these candidates and seen that they're all extremists. Raise your hand if, gov if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. We are back, and we're glad you joined us. Uh, this has got to be the easiest show I think we've ever done, yeah. because it's all—it's all. We're just—we're just telling you what the president has done in the last few years he's been in office. And you know what? He is the only president, and and I, and both of us have been fortunate enough to meet or know or be around him. The only president, though, that actually has a chart in the Oval Office where he actually crosses off the promises he made after he fulfills the Pro promise. promises who made does promises that? kept who does that who did that who no i can't think of another president who's ever done that it's usually they'll just say anything to get elected and then once they're elected well they wait another four as years as far as his personality anything. is concerned his enemies of course are saying he's unusual he's unpredictable but what they won't concede and I think most of America is beginning to figure it out whether he is eccentric or not. He's very smart. He's, he's a lot smarter than they think he is. He's very smart. And I'll never forget when he told the story about when he first got elected and he wasn't even president. Uh, he was the president-elect. And he was out on the golf course with Abe Shinto, the prime minister of Japan. Right. And he said to Shinto, Mr. Prime Minister, how come you take so much advantage of the United States taking our jobs and taking our uh, businesses away from us? You know, after the Second World War, our taxpayers spent billions and billions of dollars to bring Japan back and become our friend and ally. Why would you do that? And Shinto said to him, well, Mr. President, I'm not the only person who does that. The Chinese do it to you, mm -hmm. your European friends do it to you, and the reason we do it to the United States is because every president before you allowed us to do it. Right. Like burglars, they left the doors open in the hotel and right. let people go in and steal stuff. So he's because, the first president well, that says, I don't think that's right. Right. Well, he's not a dilettante. And, and unfortunately, usually in the past, most of the presidents I can think of have been surrounded by dilettantes. They think like dilettantes, and they don't act like businessmen. And he doesn't respect anybody, whether you're super rich, whether you're from the upper class well, I don't or the lower class. I would That's not the that. way to say it. I think he well, what does I mean respect he everyone until they make a stupid comment, and yeah. then he doesn't respect anyone. Well, that's what I meant to yeah, say, and I, that's why I made a stupid yeah, well, comment. <laughs> I knew, what, what I, I meant what was meant. he doesn't differentiate with people. Yeah. But I, I tell you what, one of his biggest achievements that has gone overlooked by everybody is ISIS. That's amazing. The last president in office called them the JV team and never did a doggone he thing. He helped to create ISIS. Yeah, he did create ISIS. He pulled a, all the troops out of Iraq. That's right. At the it's, wrong time. And everybody told him not to do it. And he did it anyway. At the wrong time. Right. And so ISIS takes over the almost the entire and, country. And he never all the way stopped ISIS. He never helped to stop right. ISIS. Never did. They just kept drawing lines. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to stop. We're going to stop. Oh, is that how far we're we going to stop go? here? Oh, go. whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we're going to really stop here. Well, maybe we'll stop over here. And he kept drawing lines. He would have drawn lines all the way back to Washington if he could have. Uh, but this well, they president, would have gotten to Montgomery County and went home, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> they probably would. But this president actually stopped ISIS in six he months. He saw it as something you should do. You should do. Yeah. And he built up the, the national defense, which he has built up tremendously. And, and uh, just the other day, the Russians and the Chinese were flying their planes in concert over South Korea. That is really scary that the yeah. Russians are already all the way over in China, and they're now yeah. allies. They're allies working on going into space to shoot down missiles, all kinds of stuff. This president recognizes the need for the national defense. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club. Let your voice be heard across the state. For just $20 a year, you'll receive inside access to our social media network, direct delivery of our Super Citizen newsletter, and advance notice and discounts to our special events and more. Call 410-238-0025. Join the club, the Super Citizen Club, today. Welcome back to Super Citizen TV. I'm Pat McDonough along with Frank Marchant. We're talking about the president's achievements. Now, where are you going to hear that? Maybe on Fox, right? But 
you're going to hear it on future, uh, I'm sorry, on Super Citizen about not only what he's done in the past, but what he might do in the future. And Frank, I want to start off with the economic news and how the presidential candidates are engaging in the big lie. For example, Kamala Harris said, oh, not that many people are working. Everybody in America is working a second or third job. Right. Now, according to the Labor Department, one in 20 Americans are holding a second job. One in 20. So one twentieth of the United States. Yeah, so that was a big lie. Of workers, yeah. That was a big lie. Uh, six million new jobs have been created during President Trump's administration. 500,000 new manufacturing jobs. Now, all of the uh, candidates at the last debate said that there are no new manufacturing well, jobs. And not, a, not only that, Obama said, uh, get used to these manufacturing jobs being gone. They're not coming back. He wrote it off. He wrote it off. Well, clearly that's not what happened. And uh, one of the Labor Department reports is that uh, there are actually more uh, jobs than there are people to fill them, which of yes. course is an encouraging sign for illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. But uh, that means that there are those six million jobs. Now, according to the Treasury Department, 80% of the American citizens received a tax break with the Trump tax right. cut. Now, they claim, of course, the left, the radicals, and the media, oh, it's only for the top people. Yeah. But 80% and the most unlikely to receive a tax refund are the people in the top 20%. That's according to the IRS. Is that right? According to the IRS. Well, mm -hmm. now the other thing about this is that they talk about uh, all of the creation and the growth in Wall Street, on Wall Street. And Bernie and Biden keep saying, Wall Street is for the rich. They're for the top 1%. Essentially, during Trump's administration, $10 trillion has been added to the economy through stocks. $10 trillion. Stock growth. That okay. is a lot of money. Now, what a big lie it is to say that this is only for the wealthy. Who has IRSs? Who has 401ks? Who has pensions, former steel workers? right? Working people, blue collar people. All of them have gained money in their pensions and in their retirements that they lost during the Obama years. Well, that's right. And I mean, I don't know what kind of pension you have, but I know my investments, I lost a lot of money. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, the bottom fell out. Yeah, it was terrible. It just there was no out. growth. And since uh, uh, Donald J. Trump has been president, we have done very well. Right. And to say that the, uh, this is all about the rich is really one of those big lies. Well, you know, they feel if they say something enough, enough of their base is going to believe it. Well, they do. And, you know, I hate to bring his name into the picture, but Adolf Hitler made that clear. He said, of course, you tell a big lie and tell it often enough, people will believe it. Exactly. And right. if you tell a bigger lie, more people will believe it. So their whole campaign of against the president is based on a lie. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back, and we'll talk about uh, some of his accomplishments in foreign affairs. Now, that is an area of the presidency in the United States where a president has a great deal of uh, latitude without the Congress and can accomplish things where he doesn't need the Congress. And this president has done some amazing things that... It's really hard to believe what he's accomplished there, but it's tremendous. So I'm Pat McDonough with Frank Marchant. This is Super Citizen TV. We will be right back. Talk Radio 680 WCBM. Sean and Frank, Maryland's Wake Up Call. Baltimore's Town Hall with Bruce Elliott. And the most powerful names in talk. Talking about what matters to you. Stimulating talk breaking news where Baltimore comes to talk talk radio 680 WCBM the senior vote the prime time vote in America and every one of those seniors are benefiting from Trump's economic boom and Wall Street 
and the stock market. They are all of their pensions are giving them extra money every week to buy food, to pay the electric bill, to see their grandchildren. And I can tell you, uh, they may not respond to polls. But they well, come they out and didn't vote. Last time, they certainly didn't, did they? Even no. exit polls, they didn't say. Well, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Michael Moore, who I've quoted before, no pun intended. He's worried, yeah. Uh, he said that, and it makes sense what Michael Moore said, uh, Trump has not lost one inch of his base. President Ronald Reagan once said, when he was president and the Democrats controlled the Senate and the House, he said, we have the White House. We have the Oval Office. We don't have the culture. We don't have the society. And we don't have the House and Senate. So this president, uh, when he was elected, Frank, my opinion was that it was the equivalent of a batter coming up in the ninth inning. And we were losing four to three. And if Trump did not hit a home run and walk off with a four to four tie, it would have been all over. Hillary and that team would have won, and the door would have been closed, and we would be out of here. A long time. You're right about so that. So Trump had a great victory, but the president's victory is the equivalent of a walk-off home run that ties the game. The game is tied. We need that four more years, and even after that, we've got to go way beyond that. Kima, it would have been frightening if Hillary would have won, because all of the dirty tricks they did, and they did a lot of dirty tricks, all the illegal would have just stuff. been swept under the rug. All Nobody, the corruption. You wouldn't know it. We wouldn't know all it. All the criminal it corruption. And I honestly believe the person who orchestrated and pulled the strings for all that sat in the Oval Office. I, I just honestly believe that may it come, would not have happened. That, that, he not that may happen, and he's his, not in there anymore, so somebody said they can be indicted when they're out of there. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I truly, truly believe, and the reason I believe that is because I think he was afraid of his of his entire legacy being flushed down the toilet because he knew what well, would happen. Also if, that he was, a, you know, it, you can't think of Barack driven. Obama. Obama as a, uh, a radical, but he had an agenda. It was the radical left. George Soros was a big supporter. Yes. His job was to move the country forward to the left and close the door behind him when he was leaving. He did that. He got an A-plus from George Soros on his report card. He was very successful, and they were ready to close the door and take control, and it didn't happen. But anyway, one of the ways we make sure it does not happen in the future, of course, is through the truth. Truth and knowledge guarantee liberty. The more you know, and if it's the truth, you're never going to vote for anybody that's going to take away your liberty. You find out all about that on Super Citizen TV. Please support us. Help us out. We need your help. I'm Pat McDonough with Frank Marchand. Thanks for tuning in.